All right, so I was uh, listening to the conversation, the last one between me and Shannon. And as I'm listening to it, it's really tough for me to listen because while she's talking nonstop, pretty much, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, God, I wish she would just be quiet. Just shut up for five minutes and hear what I'm trying to say to her. But she has to constantly go off on what's in her head. And that's the thing, is that she's not listening to what it is that I'm trying to say to her. So basically, she's directing the conversation in 30 different directions, and I don't ever actually get to finish what it is that I'm trying to say. And I'm sure a few of you have noticed that. And then there's a few of you who hate me outright and literally hate the fact that I'm speaking at all. But that's what it's like to speak to Shannon. She doesn't hear anything that I have to say. And she catches a little bit here and there. But for the most part, she's so busy talking that she's not able to understand. And I'm not able to say what it is that I'm trying to say. <laughs> The whole conversation, I'm frustrated as fuck because she's not listening. Now, she did listen a little bit better than normal. She did spend a little bit more time listening than she normally does. Most of the time, it's non-stop jabber. And that's the thing. People get things wrong because they have their own assumptions about things, and then they want to talk about their assumptions like their assumptions are set in stone. And that's just not the case. The fact is, I needed somebody to listen. Somebody who wanted to help, who would actually listen to what it is that I had to say. With uh, Layla Johnson, Layla Dunan, whatever she's going by now, it was all in texting. And the fact that she wasn't even a real person, she was just pretending to be autistic, just pretending to be a real person, just pretending to care, just pretending like she can't talk. She was catfishing. And I didn't even know what catfishing was until uh, Layla Johnson, by the way. But it makes it very complicated for me. Extremely complicated for me. Because all I can do is speak to YouTube. And when I'm not on a Facebook ban, I speak to Facebook. And that's the thing, is that Shannon's not a bad person... She just is incapable of listening. Now, I do know people who are capable of listening. I'm just cut off from communicating with them. Due to Facebook bans and hatred and them not wanting to lose the friends that they have in real life. Because I'm not a real life friend anymore. I'm just this dude on Facebook who streams. With Shannon, when I screamed at her that day, way last year, when I was next to the railroad tracks in Chapel, Nebraska, it was the third phone call that we had had. The third one, where she had talked over me pretty much the whole time. When I was screaming, I was trying to get her to shut up and listen to what I had to say. And just like that last conversation that we recorded, it was her talking her interrupting, her not getting the point. But she usually says the same thing about 30 times in a row. So, actually, literally 30 times in a row that day that uh, I screamed at her. And that's where the complication comes in. I'm not allowed to scream. Everybody else is allowed to scream, but I'm not. If I'm screamed at then I have to just take it. I somehow magically deserve it. The reason that I recorded that call, the reason that I record all of them, is so that people can see what it is that I'm dealing with and also how I'm trying to interact and how I'm trying not to get people butt hurt. When I bring up Shannon's drinking, it's not to be an asshole. It's because the repercussions of that are very difficult for me to handle. The repercussions of 
that are what keep me shut down. Just like at my dad's, except my dad was screaming at me. And my dad wasn't drinking. My dad's just an asshole. A very opinionated asshole. Now me, I was a much kinder, more decent person before all of this happened. When I hurt my back, my friends became just friends on Facebook. And then they wanted to tell me all that pretty shit that they say all the fucking time. You know, you just have to love yourself. You know, you get to see your friends and family without being threatened, without being harassed. Over two years of this, I tried to go to the police. The police were absolutely no help to me whatsoever. They were assholes. Treated me like I wasn't a human being. Like I'm not worth listening to because I'm not a human being. And that really does piss me off. Like why is it that they were willing to listen to Natalie and her family but not to me? Why was I less of a human being? Why was I less worth listening to? It does bug me. And I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't. A lot of people are assholes, though. For me, I had to be an asshole to defend myself. Had to be. And that's not something that I enjoy. I'd rather hang out with my friends and do something enjoyable. Going to Boulder to see my friends and getting assaulted is not enjoyable. Not even close to enjoyable. Right now, I have Star Trek Online playing music in the background. Why do I have Star Trek Online playing in the background? Well, first of all, it helps to light me up a little bit. Having a black screen, sometimes when I try to post it up, it says that it's a duplicate. And it won't allow me to post it. But that's not the only reason. Now, I try to treat people like human beings. I try to treat them the way that I want to be treated. But it got to the point where I ended up having to treat people how they treat me. So that they would get the point. But instead of getting the point, instead of understanding that I'm treating them the way that they treat me, they play victim. They whine and complain. And then complain and whine at me about whining and complaining. With Shannon, she's not a bad person. You can tell by listening that she does care. She's just too busy talking. That's why there needs to be an autism specialist to deal with this. An autism advocate. When I went in on the 29th of December of 2016, 2017, sorry, to talk to those officers, I knew that I was going to have communication issues. I needed somebody there with me. Now those officers, instead of talking to me one-on-one, -on -one, they did what everybody does. They gang up on me. They didn't need to gang up on me. I was trying to be helpful. I was trying to be useful. But it didn't end up going that way. What ended up happening instead is me getting treated like shit. And I didn't deserve that. I was trying to help. People keep saying stupid shit to me like, why don't you leave Natalie's family alone? Well, with all due respect, I did leave Natalie and her family alone. But Natalie's family and friends didn't leave me alone. And that's why there was such an issue. I was being called a stalker. I wasn't hiding the fact that I was trying to get Natalie to talk to me. I didn't hide that from anybody. Now, when it got to the point where I was calling her names, I'd already been assaulted on multiple occasions. I got a hold of her mother before I exposed Ted. I'd been thinking about exposing Ted since June or July of 2017. Because he wasn't being assaulted, and he actually did those things to those 
little girls in Virginia. Except he didn't do it in Virginia. And they weren't little girls when they were in Virginia. They were grown women. They were adults. Me, as soon as I became an adult, I started getting treated like an adult. When I was a child, I also had to get treated like an adult. Actually, I got treated like a lab rat. I got treated like an animal. But that's neither here nor there. The fact is, I don't bring these things up to try to down on people and treat them like crap or stab them in the back. I do it so that they understand how it is that somebody who is having a serious issue with sensory overload and having already too much on their plate, then these people have expectations of me. Sean, do this. Sean, do that. Sean, do this. Sean, do that. Sean, if you do this. No, you need to shut up for once and listen. Listen to understand, not to respond. Instead of bullying because you decided... Well, don't decide. Look at all of the facts and understand that I have technical difficulties in showing those things. But I'm trying. And the harder I try, the more shitty people are to me, which is kind of stupid. Me, I don't want to treat anybody badly. But it was not a choice. Who would want to treat somebody badly? Who would make that choice? Why would anybody want to do that? I know I certainly don't. Between hanging out with my friends and having a good time and dealing with this shit, I really don't want to deal with this shit. I want to be good to everybody, but I'm not allowed. And folks don't understand how much that hurts me either. A lot of these people who threw me away, they were people that I care about. Still are people that I care about. Most of them showed me that they don't care about me. Now, if it was just about them, it wouldn't be a major deal. Like, fuck it. If you're an asshole, I'll just stay the hell away from you. But it's not just them. Just because there are people that don't like me anymore doesn't mean that there aren't people that I still like that I still care about, that I still want to see. And their words, them coming forward and telling the truth, doesn't just prevent me from seeing them, it prevents me from seeing all of the people that I care about. And that's why I'm so pissed off at them. People like Darren O'Connor. Darren O'Connor, well, he's an asshole. It doesn't register to him because he gets to see his family. It doesn't register to any of these people who get to see their family. They don't realize how hurtful it is not to see them. Now, Angela Kurzmal, she fucking flips shit when she can't see her son. She goes off the deep end and she gets fucked up on methamphetamines and then she fucking wigs out at everybody. Something you guys go off on me about. But I'm not on substances. I'm on an overwhelming fucking situation. Imagine that you're being assaulted for shit that you didn't do. Now imagine a whole bunch of people hate you for shit that you didn't do. Now imagine you're screaming for help and people are like, No, fuck you. You're not a human being to me. Well, yeah, I'm going to give that back to the people who lied. The people whose lies created a situation where I ended up getting assaulted like that. Because nobody fucking deserves that. Nobody deserves to be assaulted like that. Nobody deserves to be treated like they're not a human being. Now, there's a lot of people who did a lot of really fucked up shit to me because they didn't know any better. But there's also a lot of people who did really fucked up shit because they're just mean-hearted fucking people. 
And me, I'm a dumbass. I still care about him. Why? Because I'm a fucking dumbass. Yes, I have emotions. Why is it wrong for me to have emotions? Why is it okay for these people to respond in the way that they do, but not for me? Like with Shannon's boyfriend being an asshole. He didn't want his name out there, did he? No, he's all sorts of pissed off. And he can throw a tantrum, can't he? He's perfectly allowed to do that, isn't he? But when my name is put out there like that, and I can't see my friends and family because of it, that's something that her boyfriend is not having to deal with. Rick McCormick still gets to see his son. Rick McCormick still gets to see Shannon. Rick McCormick still has a roof over his head. I don't get to see any of my loved ones. And people say you should have just let it go. I did let it go. I let it go when I left fucking Virginia. Getting harassed as soon as I got back to Boulder, and it was just a couple of hours of being in Boulder before fucking meth heads were popping out of the woodwork. It doesn't matter how good a person you are. When somebody starts spreading rumors like that, you need people in your corner to fucking back you up. I couldn't even get anyone to listen. All of them are like Shannon. Or they're assholes, which is worse. Because Shannon's not an asshole. Not even close. It doesn't register to her that when she's talking over me like that, that I'm trying to express something and she keeps interrupting what it is that I'm trying to say. So then, as she's talking, there's ten more things that come up. And when those ten more things come up, then I'm talking about those things. And basically, she's dictating the conversation. And it's difficult enough for me, having to hold all of this information in, to try to express it, as a timeline, and then she wants to talk over me. Her opinion is more important. And that's the point, is that I have the facts because I was there. She has opinions because she was not there. Now, the parts where she was telling facts, I am very grateful for that. The things having to do with Kara Johnson, those are important. That is important information. So it's not like Shannon is being completely useless because she's not. It's just a matter of getting that information. And it's also a matter of her stopping long enough to hear what it is that I'm saying. Because a lot of times she doesn't hear what I'm saying. I can say it ten times, but she's got a nugget in her head. Something that she wants to say. That's not listening to understand. That's listening to respond. And if you're listening to respond, then you're not listening. That's why I was so good at helping people. is because I am able to actually listen to them. But then people are like, well, why don't you listen to these other people? Because their fucking opinions don't matter. Their opinion doesn't matter. What matters is the facts. So in order for them to help me, they have to drop their opinions and find out the facts. But we never get that far. 